Ontario. And I'm from, I'm from Ontario myself, from Thorold, small town, grew up playing minor hockey there until I was, uh, uh, go, went to junior, played junior B in Welland before coming to McGill and uh, to play. And yeah, looking forward to sharing some, some, some of the stuff picked up along my way on my coaching journey um, and, and talk about angling. So talk, when talking with Jeff, he said, you know, it's, he'd be interested in hearing some how, how to teach angling and, and how, how we do it. And I thought I'd share a story to open up and, and talk about the importance of angling and why we need to do it as coaches. And, and when I, uh, 2018, I, I was lucky enough to be part of the, the Anaheim Ducks organization with the San Diego Gulls as assistant coach. And I got to watch their training camp. And in the first day of training camp, one of the first drills that they did was an angling drill. Now, here I am sitting in that spot thinking, OK, now we're watching the first NHL camp and they're practicing something so simple, so fundamental as angling. And, and why? And, and as as watching it, you notice that, you know, some players are doing it very well steering players to the outside, funneling to the boards, whereas other ones, even 10-year even NHL vets, still weren't doing angling well. And bring that forward to this year, got to, got to watch uh, a few different QMJHL teams practice. And interesting enough, one of the commonalities between those practices is every single one of those practices, they practiced angling. And as part of, whether it was part of a warm-up drill, part of a small skill session, it's, it's something that at each level, as you go up, uh, it's an important part of the game, and it continues to be important uh, at the university level. And later on in the presentation, we'll show you some drills that we use with, with the team at McGill, and and hopefully you guys can come away with something. Men and women come away with something that that's useful for for you. So the outline of the presentation today, we'll look at some general angling principles, and then we want to get into a little bit about teaching. So the coach as a teacher. And, and our role in teaching fundamentals, uh, some teaching principles, and then look at some turnover to the video and look at some angling and game situations and then how we practice it and, and, uh, and then finish it off there. So starting with some angling principles, uh, four things that, that we'll talk about is timing, skating, stick detail, and body position. So first with timing, Part of that timing is about taking early position. The other part is matching the speed and understanding your role on the team structure. So we'll look in the video how this different game situations relates to different types of angling. Now looking at skating, some different types of skating that are involved in getting that, being able to match, match the speed or some crossovers. Look at the scooter push, the glide phase, and then also a shuffle stride. So little details within the skill that need to be taught and need to be uh, executed properly to, to angle well. And then stick detail. Again, there's the early position with the stick detail, using that full arm extension to get the whole, the whole distance between uh, your arm and stick, and understanding the passing lane versus the lane of the stick handle. And we'll look at some video of that as well. And that stick is aimed to take away space and funnel, funnel to areas. And then also for stick detail, understanding feet and stick uh, the blades of your skates can also take away passing lanes. Now, body position. This part, talk about finishing in front, the body through the hands so that players are able to exit with the puck. So those are some of the, the, the basic principles for angling. And now we look at, well, why should we teach angling? And I'd like to recommend this book, Practice Perfect, for everyone on this call. And uh, actually, the GM of Tampa Bay Lightning, Julian Breezewell, gives it to all, all the members of their organization. And it, it goes through some basic rules that involve practice, but also teaching and, and overall improvement of, of your organization. So uh, one of the things that they talk about in this book is the 80-20 rule. And that, more specifically, they talk about practicing the things that are most that will get the most impact in out of your out of your performance and so for that for coaches one of those things you know from those from those stories that we told is no matter at what level you are that angling is important because if you angle well you'll have the puck more often if you angle well you'll be able to defend better if you angle well you'll be able to steer the opponent out of good areas of the ice and and 
force them into, into, into areas that aren't as good for scoring. The other part of this 80-20 principle is, is that repetition. So having those drills in practice, but repeating those, those things, those drills that, that are, are high impact um, and now, and we're going to speak specifically about angling. So, um, the other thing we talked about of this part, part of this presentation is teaching. So just taking it back a step and say, okay, the coach as a teacher, one of the best coaches of all time. I know we're, we're hockey coaches on this call, but looking at a, a U.S. college basketball coach would be John Wooden. And he, he's famous for the, the pyramid of success and, and winning 10 national championships, eight in a row with UCLA. And he always described himself as a teacher. He was a coach, but he was a teacher of fundamentals of the game. And just want to read this quote uh, to kind of link this idea of coaching and teaching. And then again, teaching angling. So here's the quote. Since the most important responsibility of a coach in regard to the actual playing of the game is to teach his players properly and effectively to execute the various fundamentals of the game, he is first of all a teacher. And when we think about angling, that is one of those fundamental things in the game at, at any level. Uh, and then what, what are we going to do to teach it? So some teaching principles that, again, this is from this, this book, Practice Perfect. Some of the things that stood out there uh, is the culture of practice. So we'll just think about what type of approach do we have as coaches to the culture, the general idea of our practices, what kind of feedback are we giving our players and what type of learning environment do we have? So specifically for the culture of practice, one of the things that comes up is, is this concept of normalizing error. And John Wooden is, is also known for saying that if you're not making any mistakes, then you're not learning because we learn from our mistakes. And this also ties into that concept of having that growth mindset. So well, how do you approach an error? How do you approach a mistake? And if you, you can approach it as, you know, you're, it's a lack of something, a deficiency, or you can look at it as a learning opportunity. And those, those players and those coaches that look at mistakes as learning opportunity, those are the ones that continue to grow throughout their career. Repetition, an important aspect of practice, that's repetition of, of drills, repetition of fundamentals, and repetition of, of those drills from day to day. Uh, after each practice throughout the course of the season. Modeling is an important part of that culture. And then modeling, the example of that would be having someone that players can look to to say, that's the way to do it. So that can be in terms of leadership, can be in terms of an actual drill. So if it's executing a fundamental, do you have a, a coach that can, can execute that fundamental so that the players can say, okay, that's how they can do it. They can start uh, imagining themselves do it properly and then they can they can walk through and actually do it and then another another part of that that comes up in this book about these successful uh, coaches successful teaching environments is naming it naming the drills having the players understanding the drills naming the skills and and so that when you come back to them at different po points points of the season then everyone speaking the same language and we'll look at some drill names a little bit later on in the presentation that, that we use uh, and make it fun. And that's what we're all about it at any level, minor hockey, all the way up to university and pro at the end of the day, people still want to have fun. You're coming to the rink. We're playing, we're playing a game and it's, it's, it's great. Uh, feedback. So a couple of things on feedback, it's important to have a short feedback loop. So that means the time between uh, recognizing something that needs to be addressed and addressing it, the shorter amount of time that you can have, the more effective that feedback is. So if you if if you catch a player doing something right, that's the best example. So someone, again, we'll use the example of angling. You have a neutral zone four check. Player goes out, angles a puck, has good stick stick detail. If a coach can go to the bench and say yes, that's exactly what you want to see. That's that's good. That's shortening the feedback loop, as opposed to you know waiting for the next day if you have video or or waiting till after practice. Uh, the shorter the better. And the power of positive again. That's the catch. Catch them doing it right. Um, just uh, I have a I have a puppy, just a, a young dog. And reading reading the dog training books. There's a couple of different ways you can train your dog. Uh, and I, I don't know if you can see in the background, but we have the uh, days since her last accident. And zero, she's had an accident in the house uh, just yesterday. But 
there's a couple of different ways you can approach training your dog. You can punish them for, for doing things poorly, or you can give them positive feedback for doing things right and, and catching the behaviors that you want them to do. And that's the action that that's the approach that we're taking. So uh, the power of positive feedback on that. And part of that feedback is describing the solution. So if someone's doing something incorrect, um, there's a million ways to do something wrong, but how do you want them to do it properly? And if you can describe the solution, describe the detail in detail of, of how you want to execute it, that will help uh, with, with executing it properly. And then cor correct instead of critique. So if you can think about that as hockey coaches in practice, drill, drill's not going properly, uh, instead of letting it go and then at the end saying, okay, you didn't do it well, stop it, correct it, do it right, and then move forward, uh, catch, catch it in, in the act right away. And then this, this concept of experiential learning, and that's just learning through experience and learning through actually doing. Uh, and that's an important part of teaching is us as coaches creating uh, opportunities for the players, creating scenarios for the players to, to walk through and, and learn these situations. So it could be things for, for those, those who have video to be able to go through game video and say, discuss some tactical uh, situations, some game situations that they're in. Uh, I know we don't all have game, game video to go over, but we can discuss how to make decisions. So what, what's the mindset that, that the, connecting with the player and understanding the mindset that they're going through uh, when they're making decisions. And then uh, the best thing that we can do uh, from a practice environment is creating these situations in small area games uh, of, of utilizing these skills. So we'll look at a little later, uh, look at angling and we look at isolating it in, in some drills. And then, and then adding some small area games at the end of practice where you can revisit those uh, actions. So uh, right now, I'm just going to switch over to uh, EXOs and look at some video and look at some, some, some of the some drills, some game situations. We'll start off with some game situations of where angle you might see angling and how often maybe it's it's not as familiar with how often we see angling in games so a couple of examples would be just on the forecheck if you look at a general forecheck it's usually not straight lines it's usually usually angled lines players are skating in different angles defense you're skating back defense you might be coming up ice here in the neutral zone you know you have you're trying to steer players to the outside of the ice trying to protect the middle and that's that's really what we're doing when we're talking about angling. So here's a couple of our recent games. This was uh, last night's game in, in Carleton. And okay, I'm just gonna stop that video uh, sound. One sec, sorry. Shut that sound off. Okay. Do we have, uh, Jeff, just to make sure we have the uh, XOs still up? Yep. Yeah, okay. Good. So here, here's an example we can look at uh our, this player here who's on the four check and goal is to steer the puck to the outside stick to the inside get that early position in the middle of the ice so stick on the ice that's the key and then you want it to be in that passing lane so it kind of loses the lane but we do are able to steer it to the outside now if we look at this player now his job is to angle and again our goal at, in angling is to keep that puck to the outside and if you think about his position, he has a decent position. And but look at the stick detail, stick in front, that allows some space in behind where, where this player is allowed to, the Carlton player can get the puck into the middle of the ice. So example there of a little bit of good, a little bit of little bit of angling that needs an adjustment. And and you can see it within games. You'll see some good angling, you'll see some bad angling, and good offensive players have the ability to get defensive players off their angle. So another example here. We'll look at a different situation because we'll look at a practice drill, how to isolate this is that F3. So we have an offensive uh, offensive zone four check here. We have that F3 and a tendency for a lot of players in this situation is to go straight at this puck and try to pick it off so you can be in the offensive zone. Uh, and the skill that's involved in avoiding that and avoiding odd man rushes against is being able to take a little bit of an angle, force this player to the outside, and use your stick and your skates to keep the puck to the outside. So you can see this player comes over, stick in the middle, forcing the puck, keeping it on the outside, but again, stick in the air and stick in the air on the check and bumping it and not being able to finish in front 
allows that puck to continue up the ice and get into the offensive zone. So looking at some drills in practice, we'll look at ways that we can practice finishing in front, stick underneath, stick the puck. Uh, and here's a good example of some angling on a neutral zone four check. We have this player here. If we watch the stick detail of that player and the second player, they are steering with the puck, steering with the stick, steering with the stick in the middle, forcing the play to the outside, and then finishing in front. So that forces the puck back. And we'll take another look at this from a different perspective and from a skating perspective. So one of the things we talked about is, is that early position. And then we talked about skating, the four different types of skating. There was the crossover, the glide, the, uh, the scooter stride, and the shuffle. So if you watch, to get into position, there's a little bit here, and a video might be a little bit choppy, but you can see there's a little bit of a shuffle stride, and then there's a little bit of a scooter push here, and then into the crossovers with the stick in front, and that allows the player to have good position and be able to, to finish the check and then finish in front of that player and have a good, have a good angle. A couple other situations within games where we see angling is, is the penalty kill. And so we'll look at a couple clips on the penalty kill four check, uh, a one, one, two, and then a, a penalty kill in zone and look at the F one here. He's up ice. Now he's going to be skating backwards and trying to force the puck to the outside. Now this is a drop breakout. So if you watch F two here, he's going to reattack and try to force that puck out of the middle of the ice. Cause that's the dangerous area. He has a stick out taking an inside lane that forces the puck to the outside. And because of that, that allows the second player here, the D-man to take an angle as well. So because of that play, you see force, puck is forced to the outside. This D-man's got to stick to the middle of the ice, trying to do the same, keep the puck to the outside, being able to, this angle has allowed him to reattack. But again, this D-man, might have lost his angle a little bit, a little bit too early, which allowed the puck to get to the middle of the ice. But that first angle early on, that player was allowed to, to stay on the inside. Now looking at in zone, uh, play out a little bit of a longer clip here on the penalty kill. You can see right away, player is angling, forcing the puck to the outside, stick on the inside so that there's a couple of details, the skating, the stick details, and a couple of different types of skating involved. And then it's not just the forwards. If we watch this D-man here at the bottom of the screen, you can watch the angle he takes, an inside-out angle, trying to continue to flush that puck to the outside. And you can see his stick is on the inside to avoid any pucks in the middle. So watch it coming in there, angling in the inside out, trying to keep the puck to the outside. And we'll watch it a little bit more. And again, watch these top forwards. There's lots of angling on the penalty kill. It's a very important skill that often gets under uh, overlooked and it's something that should be practiced is this ability to angle. You can see stick really far out and then we can watch the scooter stride, scooter, scooter, scooter push here, scooter push to keep that player, keep that puck on the outside in the less dangerous area of the ice. Puck gets through and you see the other uh, penalty kill forward activate and he's going to come out with his stick in the lane and then force it. You can watch the skating, watch the angling, skating, stick detail, stick the puck. And again, it's so, it's so it goes again, stick out, angling, pushing that puck down and uh, puck gets through. That's a pretty dangerous, dangerous play. And then you can look at an example of perhaps uh, angling that could be a little bit better is this D-man might want to take a, an inside out angle with his stick on the inside to avoid this pass that goes to a really dangerous area of the ice. So some good angling, some, some angling that needs to be improved. And uh, but looked at a couple different situations there. We looked at our, our offensive zone four check. We looked at an F3, we looked at the neutral zone four check and then the PK four check and PK in zone. And look at a few different, different situations uh, in, the, in those games. So uh, now I'd like to share with you some, some different angling drills and, and we can look at how to teach them and how to teach the, the some of the key points with them. And this one is uh, borrowed as, uh, as, as, as coaches do. We often borrow drills from other people. This one's borrowed from West Wolf. And uh, so one of the keys here, again, stick detail, screw stride, taking good ice. So a couple of ways, couple of ways to work on those things. 
is again, so we'll see the first player come around the cone. And then key here is get, getting that stick out early, influencing that puck out wide. And you can see the challenge that, that often happens is committing that stick too early. It allows the puck to be able to get into the middle of the ice. Watch a couple of these. And again, that angle, stick in early position. Good job there, keeping stick to the puck. And in a situation like this, the thing to, to recognize is that if a player is on his backhand side here and, it, and he pulls the puck and the puck is here on, on, on the inside, at some point, he's going to have to pull that puck to the inside. So that's when this stick can start taking away some space and getting into that puck because at some point, he's going to have to stick handle back. And like on this example, he stick handles right into the stick. Look at one more. Get that puck out early. Again, right-handed shot. So he's going to have to come around with that stick. Another example. So we looked at that offensive zone, that F3 in the offensive zone. So the example here is going to be this guy in the middle. He's going to be like that F3. So this works in a couple of things. It works on rim retrievals, works on passing through that soft lock, but also, also that F3 soft lock guy. So we're going to look at this guy right here. And look at the angle he takes this is a game like situation where a puck might be rimmed out of the zone. So that forward who's breaking out, he's going to take that angle. The low centerman is usually coming somewhere like that. So the defending F3, he's got to take an angle where he's not going to get beaten by a forward skating out of the zone. But this is just a continuous drill that you can do on both, both sides of the ice. And again, you can see on this side, you have your F2 here. He's the guy who's angling. And again, they're, they're just providing some passive pressure here but you can kind of get the idea that you get used to that angle, get used to skating through there and talked about that repetition in practice, repeating these, this, this angling concept in a whole bunch of different ways, in different situations. And, and players always need reminders of the stick detail and in different areas of the ice, it requires some different types of skating, getting used to that maybe scooter push or the, the, uh, the shuffle stride to readjust your speed in different areas of the ice is, is re really important. Uh, another one, uh, you guess you could probably guess where we, we borrowed some of these drills for, call this one drum and angling. And it's again, it's, just, it's in that same area of the ice, that defensive zone, uh, looking at that change of direction and it, it's a little bit more of a tighter, tighter situation. But if you look at that stick detail, the steering to the outside, uh, this one comes off a shot. This is a good one to do. Early in practice, you can start practice with this one coming around. And if you watch as a shot, player stops, gets his stick out at the time of the shot. The second second player leaves, stick to the inside. And again, just more repetition of this, this drill here, uh, more repetition of this skill of, of angling. And we'll make these uh, available for you after as well, these, these drills and, and, the, and the drill diagrams so you can, you can use them. When you're having a, an angling practice, but you can see a couple of these different situations where uh, the angling is not always great. Like these players at any level, and we talk about university players. This is a good example here, good stick. And then there's always a there's always a point with the angling where the stick has to change from the outside to the inside, and that's when you can commit your stick and you go full extension. This stick's a little tight to the player's body, but he might on this switch where he's switching from his forehand to push the player to the backhand, he can go full extension and a little bit late allows the player to get around him. We've got a couple more. And again, some guys can do it well and some guys just need work on it. Detail there. Next one is moose head stick lift. And similar to that first example of that F, uh, F3 video coming into the neutral zone, this is one of those situations where you got to finish in front, cut the player's hands, put your body through his hands and, and so you can exit with the puck. So the way it is, player starts here, cuts off the angle, player with the puck skates through and then heads down the other way to shoot. So again, player on the dot, just getting an angle, this player with the puck, skating out and then want to get underneath the hands, finish in front and attack the other way. Watch a couple of reps of that. 
finish in front. And again, teammates really not that willing to uh, to hit their teammates on these drills, but but it's important to get that get used to getting in front of those pucks, getting underneath the stick, have that good body position, and a good one to do at the start of practice. And you can actually combine some of these drills as you get forward. So we call this one, we have drum and dangling, moose head stick lift, and those teaching concepts. So that teaching that repetition, so we can run out and practice and say, okay, uh, everyone at the four blues, drum and dangling, and run it into the moose head stick lift. Um, and then you can add variations to it as well, right? So this is the second variation, adding a back checker. So if you want to add a little conditioning, so that player who gets, that loses the puck, he becomes a back checker, tracks back on that, add a little bit of a skate, and that's that back and forth continuous. And don't need to run this one too long because it's it can be pretty taxing, that stop and start, and, and, and a lot of players going at the same time. you got four players going at the same time. And just to show some practice plans of, of, of how the angling comes, comes into the play. And it's something that with the break that we did, uh, we were off, in, as, as I'm sure everybody here was off in, in January, coming back was returning to some fundamentals. So angling made its appearance in, in most practices. So if we look uh, on the left practice plan here um, in February, uh, we looked at doing that drum and angling and did that right before doing some neutral zone four check drill. And then again, the next day we did that loose head stick lift and added the drum and build angling. So getting a couple different angling drills within each practice, it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it goes a long way when, in, in terms of you get to the game situations. Uh, another one another one that's, that's effective is this neutral zone angling. You can do it out of both sides. So you have four players going at the same time, get lots of repetition. Uh, one of the key, key concepts are funneling to that bad ice. And again, similar to the previous one, cutting the hands, finishing in front, uh, take away that middle early, but with a tight angle, it can be a little bit more difficult. And so that stick detail is extra important. And you can watch in some of these clips that uh, we can see this, this is defending player coming around the dot, taking that ice early, getting up into good ice early, and then keeping that player on the outside is really important. And in this, these small situations happen, small ice situations happen in the game. Uh, and you can see that if you get too, too far on your angle, you can get beat on one side or the other, uh, especially against some skilled forwards. We'll watch a couple of reps of that. Watch that angle. You watch that stick detail. If, if you don't get the skating, the combination of the stick detail and the skating, you can end up on the wrong side of the play. So some of these angling drills are a little bit easier than others. This is this can be a difficult situation. And this one is a good example of a player. It's got a stick in the air, which allows the play the offensive player to cut to the middle, loses his angle, his body, body wasn't in the right position, stick wasn't in the right position. And again, stick detail on this one, stick on the wrong side. Allows the player to get in. Missed one there at the bottom of the screen. And then the other, other key in practice is saving time. I know, uh, especially at different levels, you don't always have a ton of time, uh, maybe 50 minutes of ice, maybe 40 minutes of ice. So part of the, part of the uh, one of the important things is, is being able to transition quickly from drill to drill, naming the drills so the players understand them, uh, maybe going over them before practice so they know. And so this is an example of, of transitioning from, from this angling drill, from this neutral zone angling, Pucks to the boards, all the players know. Get in, get it in a situation here, and 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 it's a drill that they've done in the past, so they know what it is. So you try to get that quick transition, and that's where these players go around here. These players are going around, and again, another another neutral zone angling with full ice, and you can do this with two players, or you can do it with with one. And see the next rep, we have just one player. But again, that stick detail, if that stick gets on the inside, it 
early stick, early position. And it's, it really takes a lot of skating, skating details to get that early position. You know, that's a better stick on that one. Stick to the inside, disrupts the play. So that's that Moe's angling. And this is that drill that they were doing at that, that first Ducks training camp. Uh, and you can do it with one or two players. And then finish in here with some small area games. So if, if angling is a, is a key teaching point of your practice, then there's a few different ways you can use, use small area games as, as, uh, uh, to teach it. And one that we'll show here is this in zone two on two, but you can also do it uh, with three quarter ice, pull the nets here and just have the same concept uh, and use that same drill. So this is just throwing a puck, either give it to the player, but make them get around that net so that those two defending players come in, angle, keep the puck, get used to keeping the puck on the outside. And there's no goalies here. So it's, so it's uh, a little bit more challenging. This was coming out of COVID. We had limited players on the ice. So, um, but you can see angling, get used to a little bit of a small area game situation you can play it out and you can see how it translates to games. So not only can you do it before, let's say a neutral zone four check drill or offensive zone four check drill where there's, where there's lots of angling involved, you can get into these small area games. You can do this cross ice, you can do it in the, in the full ice as well. So just a review of some of the angling principles. It's that getting that early position, uh, get that stick to influence the puck and then finishing with that body through the hands. And then some of those teaching principles. So what are you teaching? What are you spending your time in your practices on? Um, having those practice objectives is, is angling the objective of that day. And how is it transferring to the game? So think about your games and how often you do some of these skills. Uh, and then allowing players to make those mistakes in practice to learn from them and catch them doing it right uh, and shorting that feedback loop. So with that, just wrap it up and uh, open it up to some questions. Uh, and just like to thank you for the opportunity to share some of this stuff and, and really uh, love, look forward to hearing from, from what, if you have any questions. Awesome. Thanks a lot for that. That was, uh, that was really good. <laughs> um, I do have one. If you do, if you do have any questions, send them into the chat or you can open up your mic either way. Uh, you can send them a direct message to me and I'll get them through. Um, I do have a question other than the two on two drill that you did. Do you work it in uh, just as an individual tactic or do you do team tactics as, as well in terms of like working on a, let's say a second quick. So your F1 is forcing your, your D and then you're, you're adding a second four checker in um, to, to work on second quick as well. Um, or is it more uh, individual with all the players or do you break it down and do it in a small area with the forwards against D let's say, for example. Uh, well, a couple, couple different ways. Like if, if um, I go back, go back to that practice plan, um, like it, it, is the question referring more to like, how do we incorporate it into more game-like situations and small area games? Uh, more, more game-like situation than a small area game. Mm -hmm. So that would be like in that practice plan that we shared is it was like doing that angling practice drill to get some repetition and then doing the neutral zone four check to say, okay, well, this is one of those situations we didn't do it. Like we did it for a reason. And sometimes they don't pick up on it and say, okay, we just did that angling drill and now you got to do it in a live game situation. So, uh, and, and it's, it takes some time to get the actual details of it, but they, they might get some of the positioning, but then, okay, the stick detail, the skating, all that stuff. So that, that would be, uh, one of the ways to do it is, you know, one of those types of angling drills right before uh, a team drill. So it, whether it be like, like you said, on, um, on the offensive zone four check, you know, sending one four checker, two four checkers, three four checkers, so that you can get different reads and, and have the players in different situations. But uh, also doing it, like how to practice it, like you, you might have a small group before practice and at or after practice where you can get more of the details on it. Did, did, that, did that answer the question? Yep, no, that was great, thanks. Okay. Um, I do have another question question here. Uh, can you speak to the difference between a scooter glide uh, versus a shuffle? Yeah, I think they're probably the same name, just different name for the same thing. And, and uh, yeah, so like the, like the 
so you, like a glide would just be kind of like your legs are wide. You have the speed and okay, you're just, okay, you're in, you're in, you're in a good spot. Uh, crossover would be, okay, so now you're, you're, uh, you know, like you're building up some speed. The, the scooter push would just be like the one leg, kind of like, I don't know if you watched any of the cross country skiing and I never put two and two together until I was watching the Olympics. And when they're turning and the cross country skiing, they really get that. It's like a scooter, but it's just the one leg. So it's like, once you have your angle and you're coming around and it's just to get the one leg, keeping the speed when you have a good angle. So you don't, you don't get too far ahead or too, too far behind. And then the, the shuffle is kind of like you're in that wide stance and then you're just kind of, you're kind of trying to keep both, both legs on the ice and just, and just, and just moving them both, moving them from side to side. So kind of like little, little keys i don't have any uh video of those exact exact ones but i hope i don't know if that my my dance moves here helped to understand but <laughs> yeah no he he said thanks so uh i'm guessing it was uh it, it was well described um i do have one more um and just something for our for our coaches here when you're going out recruiting you're recruiting at the major junior and the junior a levels um, how important of a skill is that in terms of what you're looking for when you're uh, recruiting your players angling? It's, it's something that's teachable. So if they can't do it, it's not something that's like a, like a deal breaker, but also if someone can do it really well and you can see it, they, 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 they practiced it and it's, it's ingrained it shows up in their game. It shows up in their defensive game. So often you'll at any level, when you're making the jump, if it's from, from um, minor hockey to junior, junior to pro or university, there's some uh, gaps and deficiencies. And quite often for skilled players, it ends up being the defensive side of the game. And this is one of those aspects from that defensive side of the game. If they have it, you say, okay, well, that's a, that's a more complete player than if you're comparing them side by side with someone else. Like one last thing that you you, you need to spend time on to 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 fill a a skill gap or deficiency. Awesome. Um, I have two more that just came in. Uh, when we start to introduce this at younger ages, what would you consider the most fundamental aspect that younger minds uh, can handle? Uh it's it's really a combination of things but fundamentally skating is is the thing that that leads into everything else and having an ability to change speeds which means matching the speed or slowing down and that's where those other types of skating come in um, then once you have that if you have good skating it makes up for some other things like if your stick detail isn't that great but you have good skating, you're probably going to be in a good position that you can kind of get back on it. Uh, but those, those two things, one of the things that probably takes a little bit more time is the stick, the stick detail, because it, it requires some thinking of understanding the game to say, well, you have to think of where the game was and where it's going, where the puck's going, where you want it to go and influence it. And at younger ages, there isn't necessarily a, uh, there's not as, not as much structure and, and naturally that's not, that's not the goal at, at, at younger ages is the structure. So um, the angling might be uh, not, not as apparent in, in certain situations uh, more so just keeping the puck to the outside. So, so I think that skating aspect and, and developing those different types of skating strides at, at younger ages can be really, really effective. Gotcha. Um... One more question I have here. Uh, between warm-up drills and specific skills practices, how often are you incorporating angling work? It shows up in every practice in one way, shape, or form, but the, those two drills, um, the practice plans that, that we shared was back-to-back -back practices. And so that showed up, and that's coming back in February um, and coming back from some time off. And so it was not as we get into the playoffs, it's not going to see it as often because it's, it's more of the, the team structure stuff that we'll do, but at the start of the season, coming back from breaks, anytime you need to get back to the fundamentals, it'll be there. 
either once or, or multiple times. And uh, especially early in the season, kind of like it's, you know, pass it, passing, me, it, it seems silly. And, and I'll, I'll give another example of John Wooden. Um, so his, he, well, they won eight straight national championships at the UCLA in basketball. And the team was practicing the day before the national championship game. And he was out there talking to the players about the fundamentals of, of the jump shot. And it was, you know, wrist bend, follow through, uh, like the little details of that. So when it comes to any of the fundamentals, it's sometimes goes overlooked, but the repetition at, at any point in the year needs, needs to be reminded. And, and so sometimes if we're not necessarily practicing it specifically, we might come back to reminders with individual video or, or game team video and say like, here's a good example of, of some angling. Awesome. Um, any other questions? I don't see any others coming in, so we will 